All right, problem one, uh, the Shuriton section of the 2023 AP Calculus exam. So these are going to be my solutions. Uh, official, so official solutions don't come out till like June or July, I think. Um, so let me know if you have any questions in the comments section. So let's, um, let's go through this now. So we got a customer at a gas station is pumping gasoline to a gas tank. And the rate of flow of gasoline is modeled by a differentiable function F where F T is measured in gallons per second and T is measured in seconds since pumping began. Selected values of F of T are given in the, in the table. Okay, so using correct units, interpret the meaning of the integral from 60 to 135 of F of T dt in the context of the problem. Use a right Riemann sum with the three subintervals 60 to 90, 90 to 120, and 120 to 135 to approximate the value of the integral from 60 to 135 of F of T dt. Okay, so um, remember with the right with the Riemann sum, it's basically you're making rectangles, approximations of rectangles where the base are the length of these intervals. So 30, 30 to 90 is 30, I mean, 60 to 90 is 30, 90 to 120 is also 30, and then 120 to 135 is 15. So these are the widths of these rectangles. And the height, since we're saying right Riemann sums are gonna be the upper values, I guess you can think of. We're gonna use this, this, and this. So then we set this equal to 30 times 0.15 plus 30 times 0.1 plus 15 times 0.05. Using our calculator. We get 8.25. And what this is saying is that about 8.25 gallons of gasoline entered the tank from 60 to 135 seconds. Trying to squeeze it in here, enter the tank. From T equals 60 to T equals 135 seconds. Okay, B. Must there exist a value C for C between 60 and 120 such that if F prime of C is zero? Justify your answer. Okay, so this is gonna involve the mean value theorem. And the reason here is to recognize that since we're told that this is differentiable, that means it's gonna be continuous on this interval. And if it's continuous, that means that if you have the endpoints of the interval equal to one another, then at some value, if not multiple values, at least some value between them, the endpoint or the, the slope has to be zero. So for example, like let's just make a, I don't know if I can squeeze in. Let me just squeeze, put it down here so you can get a good clear picture of what's going on here. My handy dandy sketch, a little crooked, but so it's 60. The value is um, 0 0.1. And then 135. Or, no, 120, I mean. Value is also 0.1. So since this is a continuous function, which again, we know because we're told it's differentiable, like these points have to connect somehow with a smooth curve. And if they connect, then if you were to draw a line through these endpoints, the slope of this line will have to be parallel to the slope of at least one tangent line in the interval. It could be multiple, but see how I just drew a, a random curve and I found like you could just see geometrically there's multiple tangent lines that are parallel to it. So that's what you wanna do. Um, so let's, so we would formally say for this part, we would say since F is differentiable 
on 60 to 120. It is also then continuous on this interval, 60, and And you can go about this in a couple of ways. You can say in sense, you know, F pro, sense F of 60 equals F of 120. And then by the mean value theorem, um, there must be a point between 60 and 120 such that F prime of that point will be equal to zero. Um, Now I'm a little, now I'm a little curious thought about this because you can actually, all you can also use Rolle's theorem. Now I'm wondering if they're gonna like dock you if you use Rolle's theorem, but don't if you use Rolle's theorem, but use the slope versus using the mean value theorem, but then using the equation. So I guess just to be safe, if I was using mean value theorem, you would probably use this F of, you probably use it formally F of 120 minus F of 60 over 120 minus 60. That would just be equal to zero over 60. So by the mean value theorem, there must exist a C in 60, 120, in the interval 60 to 120, such that F prime of C equals zero. But again, you can also use means, you can also use Rolle's theorem as long as you um, explain it or address it correctly. But again, I don't, I don't know like how, how these graders sometimes grade. Sometimes some of them are just really strict about certain things. Some are, they, they understand that, you know, um, that they understand that just because you don't write it in a perfectly formal mathematical proof way, that doesn't mean you don't understand it. But um, we'll see what happens. But let me know if you have a question about that, because um, that's because that'll be something interesting. I wanna I'm gonna have to look at. Um, now for so for B C, the rate of flow of gasoline in gallons per second can be modeled by this function for t between zero and 150. Using this model, find the average rate of flow of gasoline over the time interval from zero to 150. Show a setup for your calculations. So the average rate of flow you would simply this is like basically like finding the average value using the average value theorem or average y. So what would be one over b minus a in this case would be one over one fifty minus zero or one over one fifty times the integral from zero to one fifty of g of t dt. And you can just use your calculator for that, like I did. And just to save time so I don't do it again. I did it up here earlier. Entered it in here. Got about 0 0.0959966. So wording that. Point about point oh nine five nine nine six six. Gallons per second. All right, for D, using the model defined in part C, find the value of G prime of 140 and interpret the meaning of your answer in the context of the problem. Okay, so you're finding the derivative of this function. Now, let's just talk about what that means in general. Since this function right here is already talking about the rate of flow of gasoline, you're essentially finding the rate of the rate. Which kind of sounds weird, but it's kind of like it's kind of like when you're you know driving a car, you have velocity, that's your rate of change, and acceleration is your rate of change of rate of change, or you know how 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 you you know how how the the, the value that describes how you're changing speed. So um, when you think of it like that, it's easier to understand because even your speed can have rate of change. If you're always driving at 60, your rate of change is zero. But if you know if you're you know slamming that gas down, you're probably gonna be going, you're gonna be increasing and going faster and faster. So, anyways, so when you find the derivative of this, 
you're basically describing how the rate of flow of gasoline is increasing or, or decreasing, depending on what you get. Um, and you're gonna have to make sure you write the units in gallons per second per second. Um, and so I did already my calculator for that specific time at 140. So I found G prime of 140. So I found the derivative of that function at 140 to be negative 0.0049. So negative double point oh oh four nine. So we can say that the rate of the flow of gasoline is decreasing by by um about this much gallons per second per second per second squared. I want to let me just get a paper so you can see what I'm writing. Oh no, I know I got I got a yes issue. Whoa, decreasing by. About point oh oh four nine gallons per second at time t equals 140. It's seconds, right? Yeah, it's seconds. All right, maybe I might as well just put at, at t equals 140 seconds. And there you go. So that should work. I mean, if you have any questions in the comments, and I'll see you in the next response problem, too.